So like what happened when I, uh, when I went to the commanding officer is the chaplain was with me, you know, the Mormon chaplain. He said, well, I don't think they're going to do anything about your husband, uh, his mental illness. They're not recognizing it. So we better go downtown and complain to the district attorney who will more likely do something about getting him treatment. <coughs> if nothing else, I can put in a complaint to him. Well, I go downtown and I try to explain to him how he goes, his, I go with uh, the chaplain downtown, downtown to the district attorney. I try to explain to him, and I made the terrible mistake of saying that I knew what mental illness was because I had been in a mental hospital. <gasps> That's all it took. It was me then who was mentally ill, not him. Which is absurd. As if both of us couldn't be mentally ill. We were both very apt to be mentally ill, but it got the district attorney off the hook. So he commanded, or he had my ex husband, or my husband, ex now, brought in by uh, our transported did. downtown and said to him, the guy asked went him, to the desert and never came back. if he did what I said he did, which was spit in my face all over for no reason at all. Just just drew back and spit all over my face. Would I give you a oh clue? I mean, if God. he's spitting on you, oh, he is going. Away from well, him. he'd been mad or anything, but he just did this, uh, like you know, like he snapped or something. He was yeah, actually like uh, giving me a kiss when I came home, and all of a sudden he drew back and spit all over my face. And I was scared to death of him from then on because he tried to kill me before. So uh, I just. Uh, Oh, and so they asked paper. him if he had done what I said he did. Oh no, he lied. He lied. And so they said, I don't know what they told him. But guess what? Instead of letting me go, if they weren't going to do anything about him, no, that wasn't good enough for them. That wasn't good enough for them to do to a woman. So they locked me up in the mental hospital saying that they they needed to examine me. And I thought, oh my God, not again. So here I am, guarded, put under guard, taken off to the big psych ward in that city. And they told me then, they said, be very careful when I got in there, be very careful what you say. You're gonna go to, to it in front of a board mm -hmm. because if you're not careful, you'll be sent to the state mental and you'll have a heck of a time getting out of there. So here I am. After you, following the advice of the Mormon chaplain, I never thought of going downtown myself. I am in the damn mental hospital fighting for my freedom. He came the next morning, my ex-husband, and he laughed. He laughed at me being in there instead of him. He says, well, do you think I was going to tell him the truth? I said, no, I don't expect you to tell the truth of anything. Well, why would they expect him to tell the truth? Oh, their soldiers don't ever lie. I had to be the one. What? I was downtown. This is what. This is what men can do to you. Men, when you put them in a position of having to make a decision about something that they don't want to make, we'll punish that woman. She has no business putting us in this spot where we've got to do something about this guy. Oh, that got the army off the hook. It got the district attorney off the hook. Guess what? I was in there for a whole week trying to figure out how to get out of there. So after a week of incarceration, I had a little baby too. I had a baby. A baby. Who was? I've heard this story so many times. I'm just looking. Oh, you people. haven't heard it at all. You haven't even heard and comprehended what that involved. I had a little baby that they, I could have been nursing that baby. I wasn't. But... It was, he was only two months old. They threw me in there without even any regard to the fact that I had a little baby. My sister was just visiting and she had to stay there and take care of the baby till I got out and could get the baby. My mother was sent from another state to come try to take the baby. Did they care that I had a little baby I was supposed to be taken care of? I'd only left the little baby with my sister for a few hours no, they didn't care. I don't even know what it did to my poor little child when his mother suddenly disappeared. Well, it, it's that. You know, oh, we don't have those things going on in our country. Oh, no. Yes, we do. And yes, we did. 
So, I finally got out of there, and boy was I nervous when I went in front of that board. I thought, what in the world? And of course, if I'd got, been sent to the state mental, I would have got electric shock, God only knows what, and I'd barely escaped getting electric shock in the other psych ward. So here I was now. Oh no, things like this don't go on in this country. Nobody wants to hear about this. They don't want my memoirs that would tell them what happened. No, they don't want them because that would, that might be risky. They might be criticized. Well, so women who defy or who go up against the system, they're not going to get very much support from the men. They're not going to get much support from anybody. Are they going to be famous? <laughs> no, the best thing to do is keep them down under. Keep them obscure. Keep them silent. Until maybe they'll die off. What do you think we're for? <laughs> so I think that's about all I have to say today. How long did that go on? Way too long. <laughs> well, you'd be talking about it too if something like that happened to you. I don't think so.